Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. This is going to be another SQL tutorial. We're going to be expanding on a previous video we did on window functions and we're going to be looking at the ranking functions available. Don't forget, if you do like the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already checked out my previous video on window functions, please do go back and check that out. That's an introductory video to window functions, and I'll leave a link in the description below. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the ranking options. Now, the option, the, the ranking functions. So the ranking functions we have available are row number, which generates a unique incrementing integers, uh, rank and dense rank which generate the same rank for same values and we'll be going through the difference of those in this video as well and then the lesser popular uh, ranking function ntile so that assigns tile numbers based on number of tiles requested so we'll go through an example of all of these and hopefully they'll become apparent to you of what each of these functions actually do so we'll jump over to SQL Server Management Studio now and we'll go through some examples so we've jumped over to SQL Server Management Studio and in this video I'm going to be focusing on our sales to table. So I'll just run a select all from that to just to show you how that table is structured. So we've got a, a sales ID uh, which is a unique integer value. Uh, we've got a hundred rows in this table. We've got a sales customer ID although it seems like we've got one row for each customer we have about five sales per customer in here uh, we've got a sales employee ID which relates to the employee that actually made the sale uh, we've got a sales date so this is our sales data for the month of October uh, we've got a sales total and we've got the payment method and that's just simply cash or card in this video I'm going to narrow it down just for simplicity so we're going to be looking at the customer ID of three. So I'll just bring up the sales we've made to that customer for the month of October. And we've got five rows in here with different sales totals. So what we're trying to achieve with our ranking functions is we want to return uh, the amount of sales ordered by the most amount he this customer has spent and return that to the caller so one way we could do that is just simply using an order by clause so I'll just go through a quick example there so we'll just return the sales ID sales total and then we will order by the sales total descending to give us what we're looking for so there we've simply got our sales ID and our sales total ordered by the sales total descending to give us his order of most when the sales value is the highest ordered to lowest so what if we wanted to actually return a rank for each of these rows we want to return a value that's going to show which sale was the highest number one down to number five so initially we're going to start looking at our ranking functions available so we'll start off with row number which is the most commonly used so how I'm going to write that is simply row underscore number open and close brackets now because this is a part of a Windows function we need to have an over clause and we need to order that by sales total descending so if you remember back to the introduction to this video what row number does is generate unique incrementing integers I'm just going to give that an alias as row num and if I go ahead and execute that there we can see we've got the order there of one two three four and five if I just comment out the where uh, the order by clause and just execute that again we can see that's still the same result because we've got the order by clause as part of our actual function so we can see with row number 
As previously mentioned, it will generate unique incrementing integers. It will never return the same value. Cases where this could be useful is where maybe there's a, a bug in the system and you've inserted exactly the same data twice and you need to remove one of those copies. So if you was to use the row number function and you've inserted two exact duplicate rows, you would get a different value of one and two and then you could go ahead and delete from that table where the row number could be two. That's just an example of how I have used this in the past, but obviously it could be used for generating a ranking as well. So we're going to move on now to have a look at the rank function. The ranking function will give us a rank according to the value, but it will show the same rank for the same value. So we can see having a look at our data here, sales ID 3 and 63 have the same value. So if I go ahead and write the ranking function, and how we do that is just rank, open and close brackets, and then we use the same over clause. So I'm just gonna copy that. So it's over order by sales total descending, and I'll just give that an alias as RNK because rank is a keyword for SQL Server. So we'll go ahead and execute that now, and we can see in our rank column, the sales ID 3 and 63 with the same value of £84.30. I've been given the same rank as 1. And then the next value down, sales ID 23, gets the rank of 3. So let's now talk about the difference between rank and dense rank. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce dense rank here, which I'm just going to put in the query. So we have dense underscore rank open and close brackets. I'm going to put the same over clause in and I'll just give that an alias as, I'll just put it as dense and go ahead and execute that query. So we should see a difference between rank and dense rank here. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that now. The results have been returned. And as we can see, for the sales IDs of 3 and 63, we have the same initial rank of 1, as we do with rank and dense rank, but we can see that our sales ID of 23, when we use rank, we get an ID of 3, sorry, we get a rank of 3, and when we use dense rank, we get a rank of 2. So dense rank increments the last value by 1, whereas rank gives you the count of rows at the previous rank plus one. So I'm a big golf fan and on golf leaderboards, if you have two players tied for first, they will go to a playoff, but they'll still be tied for first. And then the person who finishes next will be in third place. So that's an example of where we use a rank function within the real world. So the difference between dense rank or it will just increment that value by one now other than that it really is down to either personal preference or requirements from the business as to which one you use but if you are looking at taking any SQL Server Microsoft certifications then this will definitely be a question that comes up they will probably give you a table like this and say if I was to use rank what would be the next value and if I was to use dense rank what would be the next value I know that myself from personal experience and then the last ranking function we're going to have a look at is entire which I would say is the least commonly used I know definitely for myself I don't use it anywhere near as much as the others so we're going to go ahead and write the keyword entile for the function and we're going to open and close brackets and then put in the same over clause and we'll just put this as NTLE. Now notice with our entile function we've got a red squiggly line to indicate that our syntax is incorrect and if I go ahead and execute that statement it will say the function entile needs an argument so it needs a value within the brackets so I'm just going to put the value 3 in there for now and go ahead and execute that query.
and that's our row on the furthest right and we can see the two values the two top values sales ID 3 and 63 as we've mentioned previously I've got the value of 1 the next two have got the value of 2 and the third one has got the value of 3 so what Entile actually does is it takes your data and then divides it into so-called tiles so within my function and the argument I've specified I have specified three tiles so what it's going to do is because there's five rows it's going to divide that amount by three obviously that doesn't divide perfectly so we're left over with a value so it creates two tiles of two and then one tile of one and I'll go ahead and create just show you that in a bit more detail so if we look at again the full underlying table of sales two and if I'm to so in this table we've got a hundred rows so I will again just select sales ID I'll just put that onto the next line just to make that a bit more clearer and then if we use that entire function again and this time we'll do 10 and we'll order by sales total descending as we have been doing as an NTLE and if I go ahead and execute that query now we can see we've still got a hundred rows returned but the first 10 are in tile 1 second 10 tile 2 and so on so if I was to change that to uh, 12 because that doesn't divide by 100 exactly we'll go ahead and see that the first nine are in tile one second nine tile two so on and if we scroll down to the bottom uh, I think we're left with eight rows there that are in tile 12 so it takes the total amount of data and the amount the value you pass in as your argument for the entire function it will divide the data into evenly distributed tiles so that can be useful for maybe generating samples of data so if you have some work you want to test maybe a store procedure and you want to test uh, passing different values through that as table valued parameters you could divide that data maybe you've got a hundred thousand rows that you want to pass in and you only want to pass in a thousand at a time just to, for performance you could use the entire function to divide your data and then pass in where the entire value would equal that amount so I hope that makes sense on the different things you can use the entire function for like I say it is the least used um, but it it sort of did it just uses uh, divide your data up into what is known as tiles so what I'm going to do now I'm just gonna bin this query off for the time being get rid of our order by and I'm also going to get rid of our sales customer ID so we're gonna have a look at the whole table now um, we're going to run each of these functions again now if I was to run them now we'll just go ahead and execute that we can see we have various different amounts and this is just based on the sales total uh, I will just return the sales customer ID as well just to give us a clearer overview of the data so we can see we've got various customer IDs that have got a rank of 1, a dense rank of 1 and we can see here that the row number is still a unique incrementing value um, because we've got 100 rows it goes up to 100 in this table and we can definitely see here a difference between the rank and dense rank so if we look at sales ID 23 the rank is 17 but our dense rank is 2 so we have in terms of rank we have 16 previous values so we'll add one on, on those to get our 17 with dense rank it's just simply add one to the previous value to get our rank of 2 and then we can see that further down as well if we have a look at sales ID 49 we're up to 44 but our dense rank is 10 and our entire uh, 
the value we've passed in is 3 so divide 100 rows by 3 so we should see three different tiles again that doesn't divide exactly so the first tile will be left with 34 values and the second two tiles with 33 in each now what we can do is have a look at our over clause so within the over clause we've got the option to actually partition our data and that's what we're going to be doing now so I'm going to partition our data by our sales customer ID I'm going to leave the order by clause as it is uh, I'll just copy this and paste it into the other values so now we'll only be looking at the ranking functions per customer and I'll go ahead and execute this query now and we should see lots of different values if I just order this by sales cust ID just to give us a better overview so if we have a look at customer ID 1 we can see his row number he's got 5 rows 1 to 5 all the sales totals are the same value again with our entire function we're dividing the amount of rows by 3 we're looking for 3 tiles so we've got the values as we had before when we looked at the example with customer 3 so we'll have a look at customer 3 again he's again got his row numbers from 1 to 5 so we have that for each customer within this table because we're partitioning by the customer ID again we have our difference in rank and dense rank and then we have our entire function there as well so I hope that's given you a good overview of what these different ranking functions do. I am going to build on this short video and um, we're going to introduce the group by clause. So looking at this table as a whole, we're going to be looking at the amount each customer has spent and their rankings as well. So do stay tuned on the channel for that. That will be coming shortly. I really hope you have enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel, do check out my other videos on the channel. There is a lot of good content on SQL tutorials, SSIS tutorials, and business intelligence coming soon. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and click that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.